can never tell like if the lighting is okay or not ever and I edit it and it's horrible and then I'm like Ugh. hey guys so today I'm gonna be doing a, another chit chat get ready with me video where I answer you guys' questions and then get ready right along with you guys and I'm actually gonna be using some new products today some products I got recently in the mail from different companies and I'm gonna be trying new ones out and letting you guys know what I think about them not every product is gonna be new some of it is gonna be old products that I've used in the past but a lot of this stuff is gonna be newer products so I'm really excited and yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right in, not make this intro like super long. So this is the IT Your Skin But Better Primer. This is oil-free, looks like this. I'm going to apply that to my skin. I already moisturized, it was kind of a while ago, so it's kind of all soaked into my skin, but I'm just going to prime just to give my foundation something to like sit on so it's not too dry. So I'm actually going to be using the IT Cosmetics Confidence in a Foundation Longwear Weightless Full Coverage foundation and this I actually used in a video once and I did a whole review on it if you want to watch that video but I remember telling you guys that it was very full coverage it was kind of oily and greasy and it just was like super super high coverage but I'm gonna show you guys how I've been liking to use this because I've actually been really liking this foundation but you have to use it the right way so I just use like a little beauty blender and I just do like a little tiny dot so I use this much it's like a teensy tiny dot I wouldn't even say it's like a half a pump I would say this is like a quarter of a pump maybe or a third um, so it's a really tiny dot and that is going to cover your entire face now if you use too much of this you are going to feel like you have a mask on and it's going to get really oily and it's just going to like fall off of your face but if you use a tiny little bit like I did it um, sits on your face really well and it's coverage is so high that it's literally all you need so then I just blend it in with my beauty blender and yeah, I've actually been really liking this foundation. I know this foundation had a lot of negative reviews, but I think it's because people are using too much of it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the questions. So the first question is, okay, so your marriage seems beautiful. Sometimes I see you guys and wish my marriage was like yours. How do you keep your relationship so happy and peaceful? Okay, so I feel like this is common with vloggers and just, you know, to the vloggers in general, I think it's really easy to, you know, see all the good, happy, perfect parts of a relationship and assume that everything is flawless and perfect. And that is not the case for any marriage. I think every marriage has some difficult aspects to it. I'm gonna put a little bit more right in the middle. Um, but it's just not something that you're gonna show where you're going to like shout it out from the rooftops like, oh, we got in an argument today, you know. Um, me and Travis have arguments here and there. I mean, if you're a person with opinions, you know, you're obviously not going to agree on everything, so it's okay to get in arguments. It just means that you have opinions and you have things that you believe and, you know, you guys might not see eye to eye. But what I can say is, you know, me and Travis are pretty laid back people for the most part. And so we don't really have like huge arguments too often, which is really nice. Like me and Travis are just very similar types of people. We get along really well. We've always gotten along really well. Um, I'm using the Smashbox Stu Studio Skin Flawless Concealer. I actually haven't used this yet, so this is gonna be new. We get along really well. We're both very similar in like, you know, what we like to do and we're both introverts. We're, we just live similar lifestyles. And that's why I think we work so well together, but I don't have a secret because I don't think that there is a secret. I think it's just personality types and how they work in a marriage, to be honest. This is like too light for me right now. I always notice when I film when my foundation is too light because I can always notice with the lights and everything. But when I wear this in like real life, it doesn't look that light, but under all these lights, it looks really light. But obviously, you know, the big important things that we all say, communication is key. Um, if you have really bad communication or you have one par person in the relationship that's not a good communicator or they don't want to communicate, um, that's going to be a big problem. Also, like quality time, making sure you're spending time together. Um, you know, I think that disconnection can be a huge problem in marriages where you get so busy with, you know, outside things and life and work and kids that you feel disconnected from your partner. And I feel like that, that can add a lot of stress onto a relationship. So I think it's always really important to stay connected with your spouse and always remember what they need. 
You know, I think both partners need to be aware of what the other person needs to live a happy, fulfilled life. So now I'm just powdering my face with the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores powder. Like this time of year, like late August, I always get tan, but I'm too lazy to like change my foundation color and then I don't match, but whatever, we're gonna make it work. So now I'm gonna do some bronzer and this is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer. And I've used this one time and it's a little bit on the shimmery side and I can't decide really if I like it or not, but I'm gonna do it today and I'm gonna play around with it and see if I can make it work. Um, but it is this color right here, um, but it just has some sparkle in it. So hopefully it doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna use this little brush here. I'm getting text messages, sorry guys. Can you talk about your reading journey? Have you always been a reader? I wouldn't necessarily say that I've always been like an avid reader. Like you know how there's those people that literally read their entire life? Like that's literally what they do. It's like their favorite hobby. They've done it ever since they were kids. They did it through middle school and high school and all of that. I wouldn't consider myself to be always like an avid reader, but I definitely have always liked to read, especially if it's books that I choose. Um, but I never liked reading in school books that were forced upon me. Like if I had to do a book report or I had to read a book in school, I never wanted to read it. I hated reading in school. My, I would say my reading is definitely like a roller coaster. Like I've never really um, forced myself to read if I didn't want to read, but I've definitely had pockets in my life of heavy, heavy reading. Like when I was a little kid, I loved the Karen books. I don't know if you guys ever read the Karen books, but they were the babysitter's club for like little kids. It was like the same world. And I think Karen was like one of the babysitter's little sisters. And so they were specifically for kids. And so I remember reading like a bunch of those. My mom bought them for me and I loved them. Um, I loved Goosebumps. I remember reading Goosebumps in like SSR all the time. And one of my favorite books of all time was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. That book was like my first experience ever like not being able to put a book down. I remember sitting in the car, I was driving to Portland and I was in the car with my cousins and my brother and they were all taking a nap, they were sleeping. And I was like, okay, I need to put this book down. I need to take a nap. And I couldn't put that book down. I kept reading story after story after story. And I remember that was like the first experience of ever like not being able to put a book down. So I got this Iman palette by Catrice Cosmetics and they did a collaboration with Iman, which I think is that a YouTuber. I'm not exactly sure who Iman is. I've never watched her videos, but I got a few palettes and this is the Cheeky Blush Palette. So we have some really warm blushes here and then more pinky blushes up here. I think I'm going to go into this one. This is Shisha right here. And I'm gonna put that on my cheeks. And I think I might even add some of this one. This is Cairo. Okay, so back to my reading story. So yeah, I like to read as a kid, but I didn't really read much in middle school or high school. I was just really busy. But then I went to beauty school and I read a lot in beauty school. Um, I remember always going to this certain park that was by my house and I would read my book at the park and I would tan and I was always reading a new book. I remember being into like Daniel Steele, reading a couple Daniel Steele books. Um, I remember reading like The Bell Jar and a couple memoirs. Like I can't even hardly remember like what I read back then because it was so long ago, but I was hugely into reading at that time in my life and I read so many books. Um, so this is the Catrice Iman palette. This is the highlighting palette. We have beautiful highlighters in this. Let's use this gold one right here. Then I kind of stopped reading again and then we moved to where we live now and I got really into reading again. Um, I started reading a lot of like New York Times bestsellers. This was probably like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And I was really into all the New York Times bestsellers. Like I would go to uh, Barnes and Noble and I would always just buy what was on like the shelves, like the front shelves. And I remember really liking Murakami at the time. He was my favorite author. I just loved Murakami um, and I wanted to read all of his books. But then I stopped reading again. Didn't read a book for a really long time and then I got to another big pocket of reading where I read, what's it called? Fifty Shades of Grey. I started reading a lot of memoirs. So my reading's always been a roller coaster. Like I'll have these huge chunks of reading where I'll read a ton and then I just won't read at all and then I'll read a ton and then I won't read at all. I would say that's kind of how my reading story goes for the most part. Let's see. Will you ever discuss your OCD in a video? 
Okay, so I'm gonna do my eyebrows while I answer this question. So this is the Dip Brow Pomade by Anastasia in chocolate. Um, so as you guys know, I mentioned in past videos, like in passing, that I was diagnosed with OCD when I was about 21, I would say, 21 or 22. It's never been something that I've opened up about on a video before, and I probably never will, to be honest with you. It's just not something I feel comfortable doing. OCD is a very misunderstood disease, and mental illness, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I feel like it's one of those mental illnesses that no matter how much you try to explain it, you can't understand it unless you experience it. That's my experience with it anyways, trying to explain what it's like to people. You just don't know what it's like unless you have it. And that's why I am afraid to talk about it on camera or in a video and why I never will probably. But I guess I can kind of talk to you guys about how I got diagnosed and some just general like experiences with it. So OCD is one of those mental illnesses that is very different depending on the person. There's all different strains and different forms. Um, some people have really strong compulsions. Some people have really strong obsessions. Some people have just like OCPD. There's all different types of OCD out there. So it's really hard to understand OCD because I think a lot of people have like this highly stigmatized version of it in their head of like what they think it is. But OCD is very different depending on the person. So my OCD started, like I started to notice it when I was around probably fourth grade. I cannot talk and do my eyebrows at the same time, you guys. It's so hard. I had like basic types of OCD, you know, like just regular OCD. Like I remember one of my weird compulsions was I like, I couldn't go to sleep unless everything on my nightstand wasn't touching. Like I had to move everything on my nightstand so it wasn't touching and then I could go to sleep. And then in about fourth grade, I would say I started experiencing thought spirals and my consciousness would become hijacked by thought spirals basically, like obsessive thought spirals. And if you've ever experienced an obsessive thought spiral, you know exactly what I mean. They're horrible to deal with. That was like the first time I ever experienced it, but I didn't know what it was. So this is the palette I'm gonna be using. I don't know what I'm going to do with this palette. This is the first time I'm using it. I kind of stuck my fingers in it to swatch them. And I think Emery got her fingers in here, to be honest with you, because there's some major fingerprints in here. Um, but this is the Iman Catrice palette, and this is in bronzed AF. And I'm going to just play around, you guys. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna try my best to be as creative as I can with this palette for the colors that I have. So anyways, I experienced probably four really big spikes in my life, but they were really, really big and distressing, and I remember them lasting like weeks, sometimes months, and a couple of them happened in high school and I didn't know what was going on, um, but I didn't know what they were because I wasn't experiencing a lot of like compulsions. I just thought I was losing my damn mind most of the time. I didn't know what was wrong with me um, because, you know, at that time in the 90s, this was in the 90s, guys, there was not a lot of information on OCD, so I didn't know what I was experiencing. And they were very distressing. They basically take over your mind and you spend a lot of your time thinking things that you don't even want to think. It's weird. So anyways, I got to be about 20 and I had another really, really crazy big spike and I didn't know what it was. And I was literally felt like I was losing my mind. It's a very tormenting illness. And so I finally searched online, like some of my symptoms that I was dealing with and a form came up called, what was it called? I don't remember what it was called, but it was like an OCD forum. And I started reading this forum and I was like, oh my God, these people like are saying everything I've experienced my whole entire life, like this is crazy. Like I have an answer to my problems. Like I'm not actually crazy, I'm just experiencing OCD. So then I went to a therapist. I looked in my area for a therapist and he specialized in OCD. That's my biggest tip for you guys is to find a therapist that specializes in OCD. I went to him and I haven't had a spike since therapy, which is pretty crazy. I'm not saying I'm completely cured or anything like that. You know, I could have a spike tomorrow. I could have a spike in 10 years, I don't know. But I haven't had one since my early 20s, which is amazing, and I'm 34 now. And I don't know if it was being diagnosed that stopped them from happening to me. Like I was able to put a label on it and to be able to understand like what my mind was experiencing. 
And because of that, I was able to identify the thoughts when they would come and I was able to push them away a little bit easier because I knew what it was. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but I have not experienced a thought spiral since therapy, which is really cool. I'm gonna link a video down below of John Green. I don't know if you guys know who John Green is. He wrote The Fault in Our Stars and he is a vlog brother and he is very good with words and he actually struggles with OCD and it sounds to me like a similar type of OCD that I experience. And he wrote a book called Turtles All the Way Down. And it is a book about a girl who experiences OCD. And so he made a video kind of explaining what it feels like to have it. And because John Green is so good with words, I feel like his video is the perfect video to watch. And plus it's short. You guys know the Blog Brothers videos are very short. So I will link that video down below so you guys can watch it. It's very interesting and the way he explains it is like so spot on and he explains it so well. Like I wish I could be as eloquent as John Green, you guys. He's just so good. But yeah, I'll leave it down below. I definitely recommend watching it. OCD is a very frustrating illness. It is a very hard illness to deal with. And luckily mine isn't so extreme that it is like hijacked my life. Um, I feel very lucky that I was able to kind of combat it uh, and I've had an experience with it for a very long time. So I want you guys to know that it is possible to like get past it. But yeah, OCD is a crazy, crazy thing. Um, I don't want to feel ashamed for having it and I don't feel ashamed for having it. Like I said, it's a very misunderstood illness and it, I don't think it matters how many times you try to explain it to somebody. If you have never experienced it, you can't understand it. It's like, crazy and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy it's literally feels torturous like OCD is such a tormentor what is the craziest thing that has happened to you and to Travis okay so I don't know what the craziest thing that's ever happened to Travis is um, but for me let's see for my crease I used sunset for like my blender color so then for my lid I used runyon and it's kind of like a cinnamon color and then for my inner and outer corner I'm gonna use uh, Sweetser. So the craziest thing that's ever happened to me guys. Let's see. I actually know a good answer to this question But I can't really go into details Maybe I'll like I could talk about it someday in the future. I don't know But if I were to make a story time about anything like as far as like something being crazy It would probably be this But the reason I've never made a video on it is because it involves people that I don't really think want to be exposed but it would probably be my experience with an NBA basketball player and how it came about and the crazy things I experienced. Now, I didn't like hook up with an NBA basketball player or anything like that. Let's just say I hung out and kind of like had this weird connection with an NBA basketball player for a while and he invited us to hang out with him and we had some really crazy, weird experiences happen with this person. It was like very weird, like, but it was like one of those YOLO moments, you know, where you're like, when am I ever gonna get a chance to hang out with an NBA basketball player again? Probably never. So we took it and ran, but yeah, it was weird. I wanna add like glitter or like something like bright, right in like the center. This is called uh, Penny Arcade and it's like this, glittery orange eyeshadow. I'm gonna put this right in the center. It's like a really pretty glittery color. I just realized I probably should have zoomed you guys in. Look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. That is like way pretty. So I just thought of another really crazy experience that happened to me. Okay, now I have glitter all over my face. I need some eyeliner on, like bad. All right, you guys, my eyeliner is on and it's a little crooked. This one goes up higher than this one, but that's life, okay? I don't even care. I actually think I talked about this in an old vlog, but I remember this being so freaking weird and I remember being like, what the heck? Like this was the first time I ever wondered if like humans have like a different connection with each other than like, we see on the outside because it was just so bizarre. Um, now, in my last video that I did, like chit chat get ready with me video, I talked about how I don't believe in psychics. 
and I still don't believe in psychics, <laughs> but, but if psychics did exist or if there was ever a moment in my life where I, you know, was like, do psychics exist? <laughs> this was the moment because it was so weird. So I went to uh, Mongolian barbecue with Elena this one time and she was literally like one. She was not very old at the time and I was craving Mongolian barbecue so bad and I wanted it so bad. And I never, ever, ever went out to eat alone with Elena, like ever, this is not something I did. So I get in there and I am trying to get Elena in her high chair and I'm like, kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and I'm like by myself, just me and my like one year old daughter. And I look over to my side and I see this man sitting at this table like close next to me and he was eating by himself too. And I looked at him and we kind of like caught eyes and I smiled at him. And in my gut, I was kind of like, this guy's like really watching what I'm doing, right? But not in like a creepy way, but I was aware that he was watching me. So then I got up and I went to go get my Mongolian food. You know how you like cook it up yourself and everything. And I sit back down and I'm like cutting up Elena's noodles and vegetables because I'm like just giving her some of mine. And I'm still noticing this guy next to me. I was kind of trying to like mind my own business. You know, I didn't want to like look at him or anything like that. But at one point I looked up at him and I smiled at him. And the second that I smiled at him, I had like this overwhelming feeling in my f head, like I'm not kidding, it was the weirdest thing. And I said in my head, I go, he is going to buy my food for me. Like he's gonna buy my food for me. And it was like such a clear thing in my head and like I just felt like he was gonna buy my food. And I've never had my food paid for by somebody in my entire life. It's, so now I'm using the It Lash Blowout and this is by It Cosmetics, it's their new mascara. Um, I saw Stephanie Lita try this on Instagram, she said it was really good so. Hopefully I like it. And like I said, I've never had that happen to me. There's no reason for me to think that whatsoever. Um, it's not like I get my food paid for all the time. So I'm just sitting there with Elena, minding my own business, we're just eating. I didn't even really notice that he got up to leave at that point. And as I'm wrapping up my food, the waitress brings a check over and she goes, just so you know, the man that was sitting right there paid for your food. And I was like, what the heck? And I was like blown away in that moment because it was such a vivid thing in my head when I felt like he was gonna pay for my food and then he did pay for my food. It was so weird and the thing about it was is that it almost felt like we looked at each other and like we had that thought at the exact same time and so like that's why it like went into my head. Like that's what it felt like. Like he thought it and I thought it and we thought it at the exact same time and so we like were able to read each other's minds. It was just so bizarre. Something that's never happened to me before. I've never just straight up had like this weird vision like that and then it actually happening in such like a tangible way. Like it's one thing if you're like, oh, I need to call this person and then they call you, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, that kind of thing happens to me, but not like a full blown like premonition that somebody's gonna like buy my food and then they like buy my food. That was so weird. And like this whole experience made me wonder like, do us as humans have like a weird connection to each other? that is unexplainable. Like, you know how I've read actually that humans are similar to like ants. Like ants have like this weird connection, right? Like they can read what the colony is feeling in a way and they like work together and ants have like this weird intuition with like the rest of their colony. Um, and I've read that humans have the same ability but it's not honed very well. Like. There was a test that was done where if something is happening on like the East Coast, people on the West Coast can, like based on like intuition or some weird connection that we have from human to human, um, like, I don't know what it would be, but it like affects us on the West Coast if the East Coast is in trouble and we don't know, like we're not aware that something's happening, but something about like the connection as a group of people on earth. There's like some sort of weird thing. And I can't remember where I read that, but I'm like, is that true? Like could human beings have like a connection that we're unaware of where it's like, I don't know what that would be. I don't know how scientifically that would make sense, but I'm using the Carly Bible Il Maquillage products. This is in Dirty Talk, the lipstick. And then I'm using the lip 
liner. What is this one called? In Bible. So this one's Bible, and this one is in Cyrus. And I really like these lip liners because they're really soft. What is your favorite book of all time? So my favorite book of all time, I would say I have three. If I could say three favorite books of all time. Um, I think it's too hard to pick like one favorite book. But if I had to recommend three, like the first top three books that I would recommend to you guys right off the bat as my favorites, I would say The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas, which is the second book in the uh, series, but it's so good, I love it. Those are probably my top three. Like when I think about them, I just get so happy and I just love my reading experience with them. I remember just being so happy reading them and just loving the reading experience. Another one would be um, Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. I absolutely loved that book and I remember having a really good reading experience with that one. Um, so maybe those four are probably um, four of my favorites of all time. Um, but I can't pick just one, I'm sorry. Okay, so that is it for my makeup. I'm not actually gonna do fake lashes because ever since I've been using my lash boost stuff, I don't need fake lashes. And I don't really like how fake lashes feel. I think I've said that in past videos, I probably have. I can't even keep track of like what I talk about in my videos anymore. Um, but I don't like fake lashes. I never have. I never liked how they feel on my eyes. They always make me feel really tired and I just don't like them. So ever since I've been using my lash serum, my lashes are so long and I feel like I don't even need fake lashes anymore. And I love it so much. So yeah, I'm not gonna use any of that, but this is what the look ended up looking like. Very pretty, I love the orange. I'm actually gonna take this glitter and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put a little bit right down here. I like putting it right in the middle like a little dot right in the middle. It kind of looks like a tear or something. <laughs> Not that I want to look like I'm crying, but I do like how it looks, just like right here. It kind of gives a little bit of a shine. You guys, I have a twitch in my eye. Did you guys just see that? This eye has been twitching nonstop lately. Do you guys see it? Oh, it drives me crazy. It's horrible. But yeah, I like to put like a little bit of glitter right in the center on the bottom lashes. I love how that looks. I just think it looks so like whimsical. I don't know. So that is it, and I'm gonna spray my face. Oh, I love that. That's like my favorite step of makeup. Any makeup application. Mm. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope I answered some good questions. Um, I'm actually just pulling from old, like, Facebook post when I said like ask me a question or when I asked it on Instagram I'm just pulling from some of those old questions So once I answer all of those then I'll have you guys ask me some more for future videos and we can kind of talk about new things um, But I want to make sure I'm getting to everybody that asked me old questions that I didn't get to because I just want to make sure that Everyone feels like they're you know getting their questions answered or whatever So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video like I said I'm gonna link Tom Green Tom Green John Green's video down below I'll also try to list my favorite books um, anything else that I talked about in this video um, and yeah we can do some of these in the future if you guys want to see them so I'm sorry if this look ended up being similar to old looks I tried to kind of do something different but like literally every neutral palette is the same like I feel like there's only so many looks that you can do with like warm neutral palettes so the Il Maquillage Carly Bible collection amazing I love these two colors this is the co lip color I love this because it's very brown. You guys know I don't like pinky looks to my lips, and I feel like this has a nice dark kind of brown. It looks more pink on camera, but it's actually more brown in person. Um, but I really, really, really like this combination. Love it so much. Like if you're gonna buy one Il Maquillage set from Carly Bible, I would say this set right here. Um, just a really pretty color. For these Iman kits by uh, Catrice, I do like this palette, don't get me wrong, for like every day. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best like palette to experiment with, but if you're gonna look for a palette for every day, this is definitely a good one. I like that it has black. I like it ha how it has mattes, a nice blender shade, some sparkle for the lid. Like this is a really good basic everyday palette. In fact, I really like this palette for every day. This actually reminds me a little bit of the Lorac Pro palette. Remember that very first palette that came out, the Lorac Pro? I also really like this highlighter palette. Love the colors and they're very pigmented. I use the um, gold one right there, which is really pretty. But I have to say, I'm not a huge fan of these. 
The blushes are very, very bright and extremely like loud. And I'm not a huge like loud blush person. I tend to like berries. Um, and I felt like there wasn't really a blush in this palette that I was super excited about. They are pigmented, but I feel like it's definitely like a taste thing. Like if this is your thing, go for it, but not my favorite group of colors, if that makes sense. What else? I actually didn't hate this, to be honest. Yes, it's a little bit of a more glittery bronzer. Um, so if you don't like glitter in your bronzer, I, I would say pass on it. But I actually don't hate it for summer. It kind of gives me like that summer glow, which I'm not mad at right now. But I feel like maybe in the winter, in the fall, this might be kind of strange, especially if you don't have a tan. I feel like this works well for tan, like if you have a tan, um, because it will bring out that like golden glow of your skin. But if you're white as a ghost, like in the middle of winter, I would probably say wait for summer for this. But I actually kind of do like this. Um, what else did I use? Oh, this, this mascara. I didn't hate this actually. I think my eyelashes look really nice. I have an all-time favorite mascara right now, which I'll talk about in a favorites video. I don't know if I talked about it actually in my last one. Maybe I did, I don't know. But I actually do like this. I think my mascara looks really, really nice. Um, I did have to do a few coats of this. I felt like the first coat was a little bit not very noticeable. So if you kind of like thicker mascaras, a little bit more like clay-like mascaras or waxier, I wouldn't necessarily say this is that, but after a few coats, I did definitely get the more full look, if that makes sense. So I'll definitely use this more often and kind of let you guys know what I think. But this first time around, I do like how my lashes look. Um, and I think that is it for all the new products that I used, I believe. Yeah, I think it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.